Check It Out Comrade, an indie game podcast where every two weeks we bring you two indie games and tell you what we like about them. I'm Nick Lauber. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And this week is our, our browser-based game special. We're, uh, we're talking about Frog Fractions and uh, Bubsy 3D, Bubsy Visits the James Turrell Retrospective. Yep, yep. Two, uh, two thematically similar games. We haven't yeah. had as thematically a sound an episode since Goat Week. <laughs> um, and if you like goats... You will Check like out that, that episode. Week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you like uh, browser games that kind of turn the tables on you, you'll like this week. Yeah, that take very little time to play. Um, so, Nick, what is cool about Bubsy 3D colon Bubsy visits the James <laughs> Turrell retrospective? <laughs> um, Bubsy 3D is um, it's it's styled after the the PlayStation game Bubsy 3D, which um, is pretty well renowned to be one of the worst games, like, ever made. Mm-hmm. The only person who will debate that is uh, Ula Lilia. Yeah, and he's never getting, you know what they say, <laughs> never get into a debate with Ula Lilia. <laughs> uh, but, so, you know, it's it's a 3D platformer with incredibly basic geometry and textures, but uh, it's, it's obvious right off the bat that it is uh, meant to be uh, a joke and is a, a fun twist on, on, you know, I'm not sure why they chose Bubsy 3D as the theme, actually. <laughs> I think it's just because they could get the domain. <laughs> like, and it's, it's such an infamous game. Like, but the original Bubsy 3D is like if me and Nick tried to make Mario 64. Right. Like, that's, like, that's, that's how it plays and looks. Um, and somebody, you know, it's kind of got that cult following because it's so shitty. Right. And someone just thought this was funny. And it should be stated that, like, this is very much a joke. Yes. Like, in honor of Bubsy's 18th birthday, he's back. At, and you play this game at bubsy3d.com. <laughs> yeah, um, that definitely is why they did it. Like, they just got yeah, the domain, and they're like, yeah. okay, we have to make a game now. Yeah, and and they did good. So you're you're Bubsy, uh, you're jumping around, you're flying around, you're going on fans, you're collecting little balls of things, and uh, and you go into an uh, art museum and uh, view uh, some James Searle pieces. Yeah, who who is an artist? Um, <laughs> who's the like, most, most famous uh, piece is this kind of continuing crater uh, thing he's built, but he does some kind of um, fields of light style stuff that's a little bit similar to um, Dan Flavin, which lends itself really well to being poorly rendered in polygons. Exactly. Yeah, it's just it's just colored room spaces playing with light, um, yeah. and that's you know really easy to represent in a Unity game. So <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's definitely why they chose that. But you know the the clash of um, of Bubsy 3D and uh, James Turrell is sort of the the irony they're poking at here. Yeah, there's a lot a lot of just kind of like art is fun, like kind of non sequiturs that go on. Yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. and and there's a lot of like all the, the dialogue is at, you know at no point. It's very funny, and the uh, the you know you get these little pro tips from these frogs that are hanging out that just tell you a little bit about <laughs> art and Bubsy starts thinking to himself about, you know, what it's like to be in a museum <laughs> and such. And then, you know, the the museum, as museums are, filled filled with people who are cheering and standing up and cheering at the yeah, pieces. Yeah, all and... the cheering. Like, it's just, it's just a wall of white light. <laughs> and they're just, you know, just, just going nuts. <laughs> uh, one, of, one of my favorite parts of the art museum is there's, uh like, one human model that's just, like, copied three times but smaller each time yeah <laughs> standing in front of each other and they're all just staring at the piece it's a family yeah yeah three generations um the and the kind of the big turn comes it's not really a spoiler like this game you know it takes is, it takes like 10 minutes yeah the whole i mean the whole thing's super quick it's hard to spoiler um, i gave this 10 minutes yeah the uh is that you get to you get to this part of the museum you're not supposed to be in and go through like what is the portal exactly because we in full disclosure we recorded this episode and lost it <laughs> so we've already done this uh but we waited long enough until uh we forgot most of what we said so yeah uh, it's been a while since we played this it's it's in one of the the big pieces there's uh you kind of climb into it and see things you you wouldn't normally see from outside of it and there's a coffin yeah yeah you get inside the coffin and then do this amazing <laughs> Like just the first couple notes of "Don't Fear the Reaper," sl- <laughs> like co- coffin slalom. Um, yeah, so you're just you're just bobsledding down this track while, yeah, like you said, the the first bar of yep. of "Don't Fear the Reaper" repeats over and over again. You know, it, it, exactly the same way it does at the start of the so- the real song. But, yeah, uh, but never goes beyond those. Right. That first never bar. resolves, and tons of sweet flaming skeletons. Fantastic skeletons. Yeah, m- moving in in you know in in sync. 
Yeah, and there's some you know stuff that continues past that too, like where eventually you can end up going to this Applebee's. I think that's kind of the <laughs> official end of the game. Yeah, is you you walk into an Applebee's and instead of walking into it, you just crush all the pieces, and then after under it it says like art is fun or something like that, yeah. or just yeah. art. I think it just says think art just in big letters. Yeah, um, Applebee's turns into a big 3D art. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's a it's a total you know these kids are just smart asses. You know, like it's a total like you know smart ass thing to do, but it's very funny. Um, and then when you first beat it, you get your first uh, cheat code. Yes. Um, which we'll, we're going to talk about those in the spoiler section because that's the closest thing this game has to that. Yeah. Um, and since we didn't mention it at the top, it's worth noting that this was uh, put together by a group calling themselves Arcane Kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and their their slogan is, make the games you wish to see on the Dreamcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I haven't played any of their other games. They have a... a, a uh, skating game called Perfect Stride that is very similar in art style to Bubsy 3D that mm. I, I really want to check out when that comes out because because uh, that looks fabulous. Yeah, they they also did. Um, there's a really fun um, Dark Souls ambience project. Oh yeah, yeah. Where they load up the ambient sound from different areas of Dark Souls. So like, you know, they're 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 fun sirs, but also they have good taste in games. Yeah. <laughs> so right. yeah. So uh, let's talk about frog fractions. Let's talk about frog fractions. What is uh what's cool about frog fractions? Well, uh just a, a little bit of info on it real quick. It's uh it was released in 2012 uh, by a developer um that called himself Twin Beard Studios, but it's pretty much just this guy Jim Crawford. And um it is a uh entertainment game um where you are a frog and you uh are on a lily pad and you lick up bugs. Um and uh, rack up fractions, and it's the, b- the best way to learn fractions ever. Yeah, I mean, fractions are hard, and math is hard, and generally not fun. Um, so it's really cool to see somebody come along and make a Flash game that um, combines the fun of video games, which I like, with mathematics and fractions, which I generally don't. Right. And frogs, which I generally like, and bugs that I generally don't. Exactly. It's 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 a very nice way to uh to learn your fractions. Yeah. And uh with that we will go into the spoilers section. Yeah. So uh play both these games. They they but you can play them both and it'll take you twenty five minutes. Yeah. So, so do they're it. both they're both very short. Um so a little bit of admin stuff real quick before we jump into our, our massive spoiler section for these games. Yeah. Um so uh rate and review us on iTunes. Um yep. And to tell your friends about us, those are by far the best two ways for uh, for us to find new people who would also have the same taste as you and would like to listen to our show. Yeah, who also like to check it out. Um, yeah, we can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash check it out comrade. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at comrade podcast. Yep. And you can uh, support the entire DuckFeed network at uh, patreon.com forward slash DuckFeed.tv. Or not, no dot. Fuck. And it's explicitly not a dot. It's yeah, a duck, pre- duck feed no dot TV. Yeah, just duck feed TV. There you go. Yeah, uh, and that's that's gonna be a, a real big help. We we just launched that recently, so yeah. Um, all right, so uh, there'll be a, a little ditty here for a sec, oh. and uh, yeah. we'll be back with <laughs> we'll be back with more frog fractions in both C three D. All right, so let's uh, let's do it in the same order. We'll talk a, a little bit about uh, Bubsy three D cheat codes. Yeah, uh, the the first one you get is ghost mode. Yes. Um which turns you into a ghost in the game but also adds chat. So there's a little <laughs> window that says ghost chat. And the first time I did this I was like oh this can't be real and I put in like hello and then someone said like hello I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and I was like oh shit we're ghosting and like was trying to get to engage the dude but I think that he literally just did not really understand you know what was going on. <laughs> but people should use this like I don't know to trade drug stories or something like <laughs> this seems like it is a perfect internet hideaway it's awesome yeah this should be the official chat room of something yeah so you'd, you'd never know it the first time you play it but it turns out the game is actually like a big multiplayer connected thing uh because when you're in ghost mode you can actually observe other people going through the game mm-hmm. um and and yeah like you said there's a, a chat that comes up i didn't believe it at first either i had friends from the irc channel i hang out in uh come into bubsy 3d and get into ghost mode and tell me if it, they, we could actually chat in there or not. Um, and we could, because <laughs> there's no one else on when I was playing it originally. So, um, yeah. So yeah, it was a, a cool little discovery that it gives you at the end. But turns out there's actually a whole ton of cheat codes that they've thrown into this. Um, yeah. 
there's a, a, a Twitter, um, twitter.com slash Bubsy Cheat Zone that just uh, lists off all the found ones so far. Um, and most of them, like, I think it's it's fair to say that they're all pretty much uh, of two themes, which is uh, either just changes something basic about the game, like Bubsy's size, or mm-hmm. links you to a YouTube video. Yes. Uh, yeah, they're sometimes related to what the name of the code is yes. and in ways that you can tell or not tell. <laughs> um, but they're all pretty funny. Yeah. Like, it, you know, this guy's got, these guys have good taste in funny YouTubes. I was, I was uh, streaming my, my cheat discovery uh, process to, to my friends, and um, one of them, I, forget, I think it was uh, debug network settings or something of that port. Uh, that sort. When you when you type in that one, it links you to a a video that is MTV's True Life. I'm a hacker. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we're all just like, okay, this is what we're watching now. And we watched all of True Life. I'm a hacker. Um, there's a couple good ones though. Um, like uh, there's there's speed run mode, which uh, just makes everything go really 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 fast. Yeah, yeah. There's a, and there's a real speed run mode, which actually just puts in a timer. Which makes me like I I, I want to look for speedruns of this game because <laughs> the idea of just trying to get through this art retrospective as fast as possible is very funny to me. I, I really want you to run it and just do it at the next uh, AGDQ or SGDQ that'd, yeah, or something. that'd be amazing. Like I do this in Junkyard Dog, and just find you know some third awful game and be part of that block. Yeah, just travel to DC and make it happen. That'd be yeah, fantastic. That would be super super fun. Yeah, um, there's a bunch of I mean there, I feel like there's more of them too. I said I went through all of them as well. Um, but they're just, they're, they're really just kind of a joke that they're there, <laughs> Yeah. you know, like there's not that much, there's not very much utility nor like discrete jokes that will happen from them. It is just the fact that there are, okay, there are dozens and dozens of cheat codes, <laughs> you know, which uh, I, you know, I think is a funny joke. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's very funny. This is a hilarious experience that you yeah. should, you should do. Definitely do yourself. So like, we won't go through all the cheat codes cause you should do them all and uh, yep. go through them all and, and have yourself a laugh cause they're good. Yep. And uh, Frog Fractions. Frog Fractions. Frog Fractions is one of the most... So we should talk a little bit about... Um, we I, Just real quickly about the Kickstarter, because I think yes. that the, the Kickstarter for the second one is so uh, of the, the spirit of the first one. Yeah. And one of the, the ballsiest things that I've seen done in like a crowdfunding model. <laughs> um, and it, what it is, is that you know the Kickstarter got funded, but you do not know when Frog Fractions 2 will come out. Like Frog Fractions 2 will come out as uh, some browser game or another piece of software that maybe you have already bought. Like somebody could already own Frog Fractions 2 and not know it. And then once it leaks, that's when the people who support the Kickstarter will know about it. Um, but not until yeah. then. Yeah, once once someone discovers uh, what they have in their hands is Frog Fractions 2, that's when they will tell the Kickstarter people, hey, by the way, this is what Frog Fractions 2 is. Yeah. Because Frog Fractions 1 is a, like a hidden game. Like an entirely, uh, really, really clever hidden game that reveals itself slowly. Like, I think that people, the way people find this game is people just like, here, play Frog Fractions. I know it looks dumb, but play Frog Fractions. And then you just like slowly figure out what's wrong and how to (laughs) dig deeper in a way that's like super satisfying and hilarious. It's, it's fantastic. It's one of my, my favorite things anyone's done with like, twist on the gaming genre there's ever been mm-hmm. um because it's it's basically a bunch of small games of different genres thrown into this one game that you have to discover um by accident for the most part yeah by by doing something you know counterintuitive you know doing like like running to the left in mario yeah is what's going to get you you know your unlock your frog fractions in the, in this um you know, the rest of the game um and the hints are really uh fun uh, you know, in that you're just kind of, uh, you know, you're just kind of playing da da do do and starting realizing that things are wrong. Like, oh, I'm looking up these bugs that represent fractions, but they're not adding together or anything. <laughs> like, I'm just collecting fractions. That's weird. So, and then, uh, you know, at, at some point you start looking through the upgrades and some of them are kind of played straight. Um, but then you start, you know, getting the weird, looking at the weird ones and like just kind of slowly determining something's wrong. And uh, it's kind of fun because, like, the way that you kind of break the system is to go down, which you wouldn't think to do. Yeah, you you have the movement to move left and right to get your frog under these apples that are dropping and collect them. Um, but you eventually get an upgrade. Uh, or no, it's when you get the upgrade that allows you to move left and right instead of just standing in one spot that uh, 
it tells you you can move left and right, but then you can also move down. Right. And when you when you move down, there's the big pile of the fruit that have been dropping this whole game and standing next to it. What is it like about a billion or something like that? Once you yeah, it? It, it gives you it adds them up and then eventually it says about a billion. <laughs> um, and then you know you have enough to buy the dragon, which can go up, and that really unlocks the rest of the game. Yep, that's that's the start of your journey. Yeah, which is kind of like just a genre mash from different genres, and kind of you know most of them are not actually games. Some of them are though. Like most of it is just something you kind of have to experience and go through. Um, but there's two really notable like actual games in there. Um, one that is a straight up text adventure um, that totally works and is a, you know, challenging, complete text adventure puzzle. Like it'd be like one part of like gateway or something. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then, and then uh, a like lemonade stand style. Porn selling. Sim. Yeah. Yeah. Which is wonderful. Like as the president. <laughs> yeah, as the president of Bug Universe. Yeah. Or Bug Planet. So uh so just to, to quickly run through uh what all happens, um you once you start moving up you get into this uh kind of shmup but you can't really like die or anything. So you're just kinda traveling through the skies upwards and uh eventually you come to uh Bug Mars, I think is what it is. Yeah. Um where you are interrogated by um the essentially border patrol of uh of bug mars and they're asking you a bunch of questions about um citizenship um some of which uh you can continually answer uh that your your guy is freaking out about being surrounded by bugs it's multiple choice where it doesn't it's similar to uh, monkey island where like one of the things that ron gilbert talks about like when we talked about talk to him is that like the dialogue system of monkey island where everything will move the story forward but every time there's a dialogue choice, they have the opportunity to tell four different jokes. Yep. <laughs> so it's really dense. And it's exactly that. So like yep. in Monkey Island, you know, you can respond to people however you like. Nothing really happens, but you're telling, you know, four separate different funny jokes. Yeah. My my favorite is that the last choice is always just like, oh, God, I'm yeah, surrounded yeah, bugs, by bugs. Bugs, 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 bugs. And the guy responds to what you're saying. It's not like, you know, the story moves forward, but the guy actually reacts to what you're saying. So he's like, <laughs> you know, you do got a point. There are a lot of bugs here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's you know, just it's very funny. And at, at the end of that, uh, you you get your citizenship, and you you're given an ID which you can sign. Um, which I, by the way, covered completely in the word bugs. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then, uh, man, what comes immediately after that? Is that the swimming sim? After I that? think it's the swimming part, which is like I like that. It's a little longer than I want it to be. <laughs> I thought it was fucking hilarious. Like it's I was very funny. Calling. Like kind of crappy replay value though. <laughs> Oh yeah, I would want to replay that. Yeah. So it's it's just exploring this underground cavern, like bunch of levels. There's nothing really to do there. That you're just coming through levels. There's a little bit of stuff to see. But the entire time you're doing it, you're getting this fake story of the history of boxing, mm-hmm. uh, which is has nothing to do with anything else. But the story itself is really entertaining and just told in the perfect like monotone dramatic telling of a history. Yeah, it, it with like it sounds like French music or something <laughs> yeah. over it. It's very yeah, it's it's very charming. Um, yeah, and goes on forever, which I think is part of the point. Yeah, it never ends though. And so. then I think after that is is the text adventure. Um, yeah, you get into a, a spaceship and then all the lights go out and it becomes a text adventure and you're trying to to restore power to the the ship, I believe. Hmm. Um. And uh, and then you make your way back to to Bug Mars, and uh, man, how do you become president? I think you just land and become president. <laughs> like the game stops trying to have any kind of <laughs> semblance <laughs> of you know logical flow fairly early on. Um, so which, you become which is president. Fine. <laughs> you become president of Bug Mars, uh, which your job as president is to sit down at your desk and play this porn sim all day. It seems. Which uh, is awesome. It has uh, these perfectly emulated uh, voice sounds that happen every, like every day, every start of the day. Mm-hmm. So some some woman's voice that is like perfectly uh, emulated to sound like an old PC. And she makes like sultry bug buttons, <laughs> like to you, because um, you're a bug, you know bug president about your thorax and stuff like that. Um, you know, which is great. And the uh, I don't know if how possible it is to win that because. You're the president, so you can just print money. <laughs> like it, it's like a, it's like a sim game where like you just have the power to give yourself unlimited resources. <laughs> yeah, you just get the mint to print you some more. Yeah, 
Yeah, super, super funny. The game just kind of ends, and when you read the guy, he said like he never really intended for it to take off or be a huge thing. He just brought up the idea, and some friends thought it was funny, and he worked on it. Um, so yeah. you kind of see why it just kind of ends in the middle of nowhere. But I'm looking forward to the second one just being a more expansive. Like, not that I need this to be like a 50 hour quest, right, or anything like that. But like, you know, it'll have a little bit more of an arc to it. I think. Yeah, I, I want to see. You know, I, I I really liked his sense of humor in this one, and I really want to see what he can do with that with actually some uh, an audience and some funding behind him. Yep. Um, yeah. And the Kickstarter was really modest too. Like I think it was like a thirty thousand. Like it wasn't even that. Like it was a really cheap Kickstarter. Yeah. Oh, so actually it was more than I thought. It was yeah. He made seventy two thousand out of sixty thousand. That's so pretty good. It, yeah, it was more than I more than I thought it was going to be. But it is uh you know, he's got somebody to play with now. And ob- and it's now you know quite obvious to him he has a fan backing so. Yep. Sure, and pretty cool. The uh, the two thousand dollar reward thing was him shaving off one of his beards and encasing it in resin <laughs> and giving it to you. <laughs> no so. longer being the twin beard. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, I I want to know real quick. Like this game reminded me a lot of um of Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden in a mm. way. Um, in that kind of it just seemed like he thought it'd be a funny idea and it turned into this huge thing. Um, yeah. And, and then Barkley was the same thing. Like um. Uh, C. Boyardi, the, the kind of main brainchild behind it, was just like, I heard the name Barkley Shut Up and Jam, the video game. I've never played it. I thought it'd be hilarious to put the word guided at the end. Yeah. And yeah. out came a game. And, and then, it, it, yeah, it's super funny. So yeah, It is. And the, the game is super, you know, again, it's just people with a really good sense of humor making a game. It gets fans because of that. And then they did the same thing. They made a Kickstarter uh, to do a sequel to it, got a huge number of backers on it, and um, are now, you know, putting their fantastic sense of humor behind a real product, which is cool. Yeah, and the thing about, like, I mean, it's a little different than Barkley in that, like, Barkley is a really high quality game. Like, that game is mechanically, like, well, airtight, you, you know? You could say that. <laughs> like, I don't know, I think that's a really good JRPG. It's, it's, a, it's a good game, but it's purposely uh, playing off of bad game tropes. Yeah, yeah, but it, it actually is, like, effortless to play yeah you it's know a, like it's a game maker game that is styled to look like a terrible uh rpg maker game which yeah. is fantastic like that's brilliant right off the bat but then it also has like really cool like uh, mario rpg timed attacks and yeah like it, it goes a long way towards making it like an actual fun experience to play right in a way that like frog fractions that was never the point like the the star fox portion of frog fractions is not fun or challenging it's just funny Right. You know, I'm not saying like I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying that like you're they're interestingly similar in one way and then different in another way. I agree. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's probably it. Um, Yeah, we just totally ruined Frog Fractions for you. So hopefully you already know about it. Yeah, please, please, please tell me you played it before you listen to this. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. So I think that's it. Um, Thanks, everybody. And we will see you in a couple weeks with two more games. Yep. Bye. (laughs) 